So I'm just thinking it's actually going to be broader than people imagine. And it's going to be more inclusive because we've now got this trade deal that the the ETFs, because I think you know, we've got the Bitcoin one certainly coming and it's a pretty high chance we'll get the ETH one as well. We have kind of a very traditional cycle and that pushes, you know, Bitcoin up to the 100,000 to 200,000 range and, you know, all the other assets accordingly where they are on the risk curve. There's a 20% chance this early start is signifying something much bigger, which is the, the larger adoption and the more capital into the space, which leads to larger price rises than people expect. The potential approval of spot Bitcoin exchange-traded funds, the looming Bitcoin mining reward having, and significant regulatory and enforcement actions have a profound psychological effect on market prices. Raul Pal, the visionary behind Global Macro Investor, envisions a promising horizon for 2024 and potentially 2025 should the economic conditions lean towards monetary ease, reviving the business cycle. Additionally, he navigates the strengths of Ether compared to Solana. Since Bitcoin's last halving back in 2020, a lot has happened. The price of the most prominent digital asset is now more than four times what it was ahead of the last halving. The coin went on a massive bull run in 2021 when it touched its all-time high of $69,044 before dropping down again. Based on the historical trend that Bitcoin appears to top out about 4x higher than the lower end of the distribution range, on-chain analyst Plan B said the crypto king could soar above the half-million-dollar range in the next several years. Pal jebbles three scenarios, expressing bullish sentiments, with a 60% probability of a traditional cycle pushing Bitcoin to $100,000 to $200,000. Standard Chartered Bank maintains its forecast from April that Bitcoin will reach $100,000 by the end of 2024. A significant factor in this prediction is the anticipated approval of several U.S.-based spot Bitcoin ETFs in the first quarter of 2024, expected to happen earlier than initially thought. These ETFs, including Bitcoin and Ethereum, will likely attract significant institutional investment. PAL foresees the market, centering its attention on the front-running of the Bitcoin ETF launch. He highlights institutions' preference for Ethereum owing to its technological promise and staking capabilities for yield, which Bitcoin doesn't offer as readily. Let's focus on the video to explore PAL's viewpoint in depth. Before we get started, subscribe to the channel and click the bell icon for the latest updates. I've given up giving prices to people because you know, <laughs> people on the internet, they're just not nice. And so you get, you know, oh, Ral says this, so-and-so says that, it didn't do that. So I'll phrase it a different way is we're seeing a much earlier ramp in the cycle than we've seen in the past, which is very interesting. Yeah, you know, it's very rare to be this strong this early in the cycle. Now, we are front-running some of the capital flows, and so there's probably some correction that happens by the rumor sell the fact. But I think if the space continues like this and we start getting monetary easing and the other conditions that tend to jumpstart the business cycle again, um, then we should see a very strong 2024 and most likely a strong 2025. The business cycles have been almost like clockwork, two-year up cycles, one year peaking, one year down. And that corresponds, what's amazing is the Bitcoin halving cycle is the same as the debt refi cycle, which is, I think, what drives everything. It's the same as the election cycle. They're all the same thing. So, you know, if that continues to repeat, then it should go until 2026 when that should be a bear market year. But, you know, let's see. So I am obviously very bullish. Um, I don't know. And I, I was talking to Nova about this yesterday. I've got three outcomes in my head that I'm juggling with. The 60% probability is we have kind of a very traditional cycle and that pushes, you know, Bitcoin up to the 100,000 to 200,000 range and, you know, all the other assets accordingly where they are on the risk curve. There's a 20% chance this early start is signifying something much bigger, which is the, the larger adoption and the more capital into the space, which leads to larger price rises than people expect because people are quite scarred because the last cycle seemed shorter than most people expected. Everyone thought there was another final leg higher and that never really happened. The kind of 100,000 Bitcoin, the laser eyes idea never got there. But maybe this time the shock is for excess returns beyond expectations. The other side that I, that I grapple with as well is, well, maybe the whole cycle's front loaded and in fact it's shorter but more violence 
in 2024. So those are the three scenarios that I'm I'm juggling in my head with. But 60% probability is just it just does what it says on the tin and repeats what it usually does. What's likely to happen is the moment the Bitcoin ETF is launched, the market will focus on front running the ETH ETF. You know, <laughs> if the previous front running made money, they'll do it again. So retail will will get very interested, and you know, ETH's a broad, deep ecosystem, and people are happy to get exposure to it. The institutions, it depends whether they give the yields of ETH in the ETF or not. If not, a lot of the institutions prefer would prefer to own ETH itself because then they can they can stake it and get yield. Huh? Because if you don't give them yield, some asset manager who launches the ETF is going to get rich. BlackRock, they'll make all the money because they'll get the ETH staking yield and they don't give it to the to the ETF holder. And we've seen that very commonly in, in, in ETFs in the past. So I think that's the thing because when I speak to institutions, they get ETH because it's just like, here's a bet on technology. It's a broader based thing and uh, we get a yield so we can just sit on it. Which they don't get with Bitcoin, but they understand the Bitcoin story as well. So they understand there's two different things here at play. Raul Pal sheds light on Ethereum stature, describing it as a deep and well-established platform devoid of career risk for developers. He also notes the burgeoning development of Solana. Solana, as an alternative to Ethereum, has been experiencing consistent inflows from the Ether chain. Notably, recent data from CryptoSlam indicates that Solana has overtaken Ethereum in NFT sales. The price of Solana has remained steady above the $72 mark, granting holders nearly a 14% increase in value over a week. In comparing the two platforms, PAL draws an analogy likening Ethereum to Android, a broader, open system, while Solana resembles Apple, a more closed yet streamlined ecosystem with an intuitive user experience. Now, let's delve into the video. So Ethereum is broad, deep, and has no career risk in building on it. So it's, you know, it's, it's the established, it's the establishment. It's like, if you want to build in this space, that's the easiest place to go. The, the, the density of talent, the, uh, the density of applications, the density of knowledge is immense. So how can you not be bullish on that, right? That's always going to attract people. It's always going to create a rich and vibrant ecosystem. Solana is kind of the new kid on the blog, but you know they've managed to solve one of the problems that ETH was struggling with, which was speed and cost. So two of those, um, they've managed to solve without compromising security. So, okay, that's interesting. So that's why we've seen a lot of people start building on Solana. And we've seen a very, very vibrant ecosystem being built. And so ETH had to solve that with layer twos, essentially. Well, it doesn't have to happen in Solana. But there's two big system developments in Solana that that really means that it has to play catch up in value terms, I think. Uh, doesn't mean it has to be the same size as ETH or bigger than ETH. None of those, it's just, you know, the, the rate of change of, of um, value accrual comes quite quickly. One is the compressed NFTs I talked about before. That's a Nobody's got their head around this yet. People are thinking, oh, I can just print a thousand, a million monkey JPEGs. You know, it's it's not about that. It's what else can you use a smart contract for? That's really interesting. Secondly, it's Fire Dancer, which most people aren't aware of yet. But Fire Dancer is the validator built by Jump Trading that essentially rebuilds Solana in a different language from the ground up. What they've done is double the security by having these two validators on the network. And in testing, it's had a million TPS. So this is of an order of magnitude different. Why does a million TPS matter? Because Solana's pretty fast as it is. It's because it matters and why it's being built by jump trading is high frequency traders use fiber optic cables and, and their constraint is the speed of light. And they're like, well, if we want exchanges to go decentralized and be able to cope with the traditional financial markets, you're going to need to get to this speed. That's what this is about. And that opens up a whole bunch of use cases. So I see the vibrancy of the Solana developer network. I also think the UX of Solana overall is just nicer. It's just an easier place to hang out. And so 
you know, the, the applications built on Solana just seem just a little bit easier. And so the the comparison, Chris Berniski talks about this as well, it's like Android versus Apple. It's like Solana feels like Apple. It's a closed system, but it's very slick, very good, will create great loyalty. Ethereum is much broader, much more open in terms of other things that can be built on top of it. Not only Bitcoin ETFs, but also having made boost the price of the cryptocurrency next year. Also, expectations of cuts in Fed interest rates may help Bitcoin reach $100,000 in 2024. If Bitcoin gets $100,000, will it be a more profitable investment than stocks? Feel free to share your thoughts in the comment section below. If you found this content informative, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe for the latest updates. Thank you for being here with us.